What's up my precog people? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to use the trigonomic identities to verify additional trigonomic identities. All right, it can be a little bit tricky, but make sure you pay close attention to how I use all the trigonomic identities in this video. And well, let's start looking at some examples right now. In this first problem, you're asked to verify that tangent x times sine of x plus cosine of x equals secant of x. Now, what do we mean by verify? Well, another word for verify is prove. We basically want to prove that this is true. Now, to do that, we're, of course, going to need our identities, but we also need to understand that when we're proving, we don't necessarily know this is equal. I mean, we know it's equal because I'm telling it to you. We're just trying to prove it. But again, we can't prove something that we don't necessarily know yet. So basically, what we need to do is we need to figure out how we can make the left side equal the right side, but we can't move things side to side. That would be something that you do when you're solving. But right now, we're verifying. We want to prove that one side does, in fact, equal the other side. So we cannot manipulate things from left to right, but we can work with one side at a time until it looks like the other side, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, my one tip here is to first make everything look like, well, sines and cosines. If you could turn everything into sines and cosines, usually some pretty nice things will happen pretty quickly that'll make it work out. And the other thing is always start with the more complicated side because there's more that you could do. All right, so what I'm going to do on this left-hand side is I'm going to turn everything into sines and cosines. Tangent is sine of x over cosine of x times sine of x plus cosine of x. All right, well, I can multiply. We don't need common denominator to multiply. So sine of x squared is going to be my numerator over cosine of x plus cosine of x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, because if I look at the right-hand side that I want to be my answer, there's no plus sign, so I guess I need to add these together. But I need a common denominator to add. So my common denominator is going to be multiplying the two denominators I have, which is going to be cosine of x times 1, or just cosine of x. This fraction already has that common denominator, so I'm going to leave the sine squared of x alone. Now, this other fraction needs a cosine of x in the denominator to have a common denominator, which means I've got to multiply the numerator by cosine of x as well, which generates a cosine squared of x. And then something jumps in at me right away. I notice in that numerator, I notice the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So I could write that as 1 over cosine of x, and now I can use the reciprocal identity to know that 1 over cosine of x is secant of x. So there I did. I made the left side look like the right side. I manipulated the left-hand side so that it matched the right-hand side. That's exactly how you can verify or prove trig identities. Let's try another one. Here we want to verify that sine of x minus sine of x cosine squared of x equals sine cubed. So once again, I cannot move things left to right. I need to start with one side to make it look like the other. So what am I going to do? Well, on the left-hand side, the first thing I notice is that both terms have a sign in common. So I'm going to factor out that sine of x. Now, when I factor it out, I have to divide. Sine of x divided by sine of x is 1 minus sine of x cosine squared divided by sine of x is cosine squared of x. And if you don't believe me that I did that factoring correct, just distribute the sine of x to notice you'll get right back to where we started. But something jumps out to me. 1 minus cosine squared, that's something that comes from the Pythagorean identity. That's a manipulation of the Pythagorean identity. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. So I get sine of x on the outside. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. And oh my goodness, sine of x times sine of x squared is sine cubed of x. Exactly what I was trying to find. Verified. All right, in this question, we want to verify that tangent squared of x over 1 plus tangent squared of x equals sine squared of x. Now, once again, I'm going to start with the more complicated side, and I'm not allowed to move things side to side. Now, right away, I'm like, wait a minute, 1 plus tangent squared? That looks awfully familiar. That's a Pythagorean identity manipulation. That's secant squared of x. So I get tangent squared of x over secant squared of x. Now I'm going to go with a very common strategy when we're verifying, and that is to change everything to sines and cosines. So tangent is sine squared of x over cosine squared of x, all divided by secant squared is 1 over cosine squared of x. 
Now I've created a dreaded double fraction, which we hate. So I'm going to clean that up by leaving the numerator alone, sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. And instead of dividing by 1 over cosine squared, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, cosine squared of x over 1. And just like that, I'm about done. Because those cosine squareds are going to reduce to a 1, and then I just get a simple sine squared of x, which is exactly what I was trying to verify. There we go. All right, in this next question, I have cosine of pi over 2 minus x equals sine of x. Well, the first thing I notice is I have cosine of subtraction, or a difference inside of a cosine. So that's going to make me want to jump right to my difference formula for cosine. Now, here's how that formula works. I have it memorized. If you need to look at a cheat sheet or something right now, totally fine. So it's going to be cosine of the first angle, pi over 2, times cosine of the second angle, x plus sine of the first angle, pi over 2, times sine of the second angle, x. Now remember, I'm trying to get this to turn into a sine of x. So how can I do that? Well, cosine of pi over 2 is a known value. I hope every one of you can find that pretty quickly. That's going to be 0. So I have 0 times cosine of x. Sine of pi over 2 is another value that you should get pretty quickly, 1. So I have 1 times sine of x. Now, here's the best news. 0 times anything is going to be a 0, completely wiping that out. 1 times sine of x is sine of x, so all that's left when the dust settles is a sine of x, which is exactly what I was trying to show. So there was a couple quick, easy examples. I mean, maybe not easy for you yet, but hopefully with a little bit of practice, they will be easy. But those are some examples of we're verifying trigonomic identities with the main trigonic identities that we know. Now, every identity that I showed you in this problem here was not one of our original trigonomic identities, but once we verify it, now it is a trigonomic identity, technically. It's all about manipulation, manipulating one side to look like the other using the trigonomic identities.